Good afternoon, everybody. Today I'm going to talk about open webs, uh, a modeler, and uh, open source uh, WIPS. So on the agenda, uh, I will first uh, tell you what it is, then the origin of the tool, where the ID came from, and talk a little bit about the architecture of this thing. And then I'll talk about the internal design of things work internally, followed by the release plan, and then a demo. So, uh, first of all, I'm the author of Eric RackenG, and also work at NEK Advanced Security Groups. Um, Open Whips, uh, we'll split the word to explain it. Uh, first, it's you got it, the first part, it's uh, open source tools. Uh, w stands for wireless, and IPS is an uh, intrusion prevention system. There are IDS and IPSs. Uh, IDS uh, just detect intrusions and notify you for, of the intrusion. And IPS is react on these things, so they prevent the intrusion. Uh, the idea came from a project I started uh, slightly more than a year ago, and I uh, didn't really have time to, to work on it lately. Uh, it was monitoring all the channels on 2.4 gigahertz. And I pushed the idea a bit further. Why just monitoring? Monitoring is not that interesting one. You see lots of, you can see lots of weird stuff happening on your on wireless networks. Then, by seeing all those weird stuff, why not detecting uh, those weird things happening in IDS? And I pushed it a little bit further, and since these cars. Um, are pretty good at injection, why not do uh, intrusion prevention system instead to prevent intrusions? Uh, this setup is based on a 14 alpha. Uh, this was an early prototype based on the cardboard to see how much uh, space I needed. So as you can see, a uh, 19 inch rack will fit perfectly. So, commercial IPS is wireless IPS are freaking expensive. Uh, when you want a basic setup, you will need uh, a central server to, ma to manage everything, and all the sensor that capture data, send it to the central server for analysis. The central server itself costs about six to eight grand, and each sensor costs about each and a buck each. So. For a basic setup, you look at 10 grand. This is really expensive. There is no existing open source solution yet. Uh, I saw Stealth Wireless, uh, but it hasn't been updated in, in a while, and uh, Snort doesn't have anything wireless built in, so the project hasn't been merged. It's almost dead. And I also wanted a whips uh, just to play with, but just spending 10 grand on something to play with and just for a home network, it's quite a bit of waste of money. So I decided to write one myself. I'll give you a free trial. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I accept it. Sorry? <laughs> so the architecture of this thing is basically the same as a uh, commercial one, uh, separated in three different parts. Uh, the main one is the server, which is going to uh, gather all the data, make the analy analysis, and react. Sensors, uh, those are just dump devices that capture traffic, send it to, to the server. And from time to time, they, they need to inject data. 
And the last one uh, is the, the interface, which is how you access the WIPs and how you access the system and manage it and get nice reports. Uh, so here, here the, the basic uh, the, the architecture. And it is going to be modular. Most of its function, most of its detection and reaction functions uh, will be in plugins. So on Windows, you will look at DLL. On Linux, you look at uh, uh, shared objects. Unfortunately, some, some checks need to be done before calling all the plugins, like basic frame check, etc. Uh, the advantages of this thing is that there's uh, no need to recompile a server when you create a plugin, when you want to add a feature. If you have proprietary code you want to distribute in a plugin, uh, it's the best thing to do. You can give the plugin already compiled. Uh, you don't have to worry about uh, the license. And for developers, just a few functions to implement. Uh, most plugins will run on the server because uh, that's where all the CPU power, uh, GPU, and FPGA power is. And also because that's where uh, all the packets go. And that's where you got the whole picture. In some rare cases, you may see plugins uh, on the sensors. Type of plugin, uh, there will be frame analysis. That's uh, the most common type of plugin. There are several layers in it. Uh, logging, for example, if you want to not to log to open width, but do syslog or your custom logging system. Uh, the alerts will, will let you get alerted in case of uh, intrusion. Uh, for example, an email. Uh, a text message or anything else. Database connection uh, by default will provide a SQLite database, but if you need a, a MySQL, Oracle, Postgres, uh, there will be uh, plugins available for that. And the last one, which is a script wrapper uh, that lets you uh, create quickly a uh, plugin using scripts like Ruby, Python, and can be any script, any type of script. Uh, multiple sensors can be a nightmare because they see different picture, to different parts of the, of the network. Uh, sometimes they see the same parts, uh, sometimes just some small part of it, and they, they don't see, they always see the same traffic. So the servers uh, will take care of reassembling the data, uh, remove the, the, all the duplicate traffic, and then process it. That means uh, calling plugins. The intrusion prevention, uh, most of the time, it, it will use the sensor we see the most of the attack. When attacked, uh, in most cases, what happens is that the, the attacker will get the authenticated, and it's going to be logged, and the administrator is going to be alerted. In case legitimate users are attacked, uh, both the attackers and the legitimate user are going to be banned until the issue is resolved. You don't want uh, one of your users be part of the attack against your network. And it can also prevent your users to connect to other networks if you want. DOS. Uh, we can detect uh, denial of service. It's not that hard. Uh, all you can do is uh, wait for it to finish. Fortunately, uh, if vendors say they can stop it, that's bullshit. All right, you can make it stop. Unfortunately, software can do much, but we have an order add-on that's capable of stopping it. it it's cheap and uh, widely available, and get the job done really quick. 
So it's a baseball bat. <laughs> and since it's really cheap, you can fill an expense sheet to get reimbursed for it. <laughs> and that is called baseball bat restoration of service. <laughs> it locates the attacker quickly and accurately. That's the guy who run with or without a laptop when he sees you. <laughs> it costs about 15 to 30 bucks on Amazon, and you can find it in different sizes. You can probably find one that fits in your backpack. <laughs> uh, now let's get a bit, little bit more serious. Uh, the internet design. This part is going to be a bit more technical. So you remember the, the architecture? You have the sensors, uh, the server, and uh, the interface. So the sensors uh, are going to uh, connect to the servers. Uh, there are two different channels, one with the commands, and one with the remote pickup. And this thing is going to be encrypted. The interface, uh, there will also be a command and our pickup channel and also going to be encrypted. Database, uh, most of the time it will sit on the server. Uh, it's a SQLite database, but it's available. You could use an external one. So the communication uh, between the sensor and the server and as well as the uh, uh, server and the GUI. Uh, it's similar to FTP. You have a command channel uh, where the sensor authenticates to, to to the server and establish their pickup link. So the data channel is going to be the remote pickup. Uh, what you'll see in that is a binary data, and basically this is uh, exactly the same as what you can find in a pickup file and both channels are going to be encrypted by default. So here's how the command works between the sensor and server. Uh, first is going to send the version of the protocol and the server is going to accept it or not. If it does not, the sensor is going to try to fall back to a previous version until it finds one. If it doesn't, then it's not going to connect. Then send the login passwords, and that's where we're going to verify the credentials. And as for configuration, and then that's where the server sends the, the remote pickup configuration, the port where it has to connect, etc. The plugins uh, say there are a few different types, uh, and uh, script forever that let you use a. Uh, scripting language to quickly do the plugin for and that works for any type of all those four types of plugin so this is very easy to to do a plugin you just have to uh, use any programming language that lets you uh, create dll or a shared object uh, c c++ can do i'm really sure a lot of others can do you just need to expose the functions. Uh, there are some common functions to to implement for all kinds of plugins, like uh, initialization, uh, getting a type of plugin, uh, getting the version supported, etc. And then uh, the spe function specific to that plugin. You will receive the, all the wireless frames. But you won't have to take care of keeping them. The server will take care of that. Then compile it, edit the configuration, and restart the server. Uh, the script wrapper uh, can be used for any type of plugin, uh, frame analysis. Uh, you can use it for uh, uh, using any scripting language. Uh, sa the same functions have to be implemented, and uh, it's a, it, this thing is a plugin itself, but need a few parameters, and it needs at least uh, the path to the script 
and the language of the script. So we'll see here how uh, a plugin is made. Uh, first, uh, the function to implement uh, a small example, the make file, and then uh, how to install it. So here is uh, a basic plugin uh, for uh, frame analysis. And you have a few functions. Uh, these functions uh, just need to, to be implemented uh, for any kind of plugin. Uh, first one is going to initialize the plugin. Uh, you give it the, the config line. That means all the parameters are going to receive. And it's going to receive as well the version of uh, OpenWhips. Uh, the second one uh, frees all the memory. Um, so w w when we're done with the plugin and exiting, we're going to call that function to make you free any data that you would have initialized in this function. Uh, this one is going to return uh, the plugin type. Uh, if, if it's a, a frame analysis plugin, uh, database connection, logging, or alert. Uh, the su minimum supported version of OpenWhips for that plugin and the maximum supported. And an initialization text, something that uh, we're going to log uh, to show uh, that the plugin has been loaded correctly. Then, in case this is a frame plugin, so you would have to create, uh, implement those functions. These are things if, uh, for some optimization, if you need a specific type of frame or subtype. And the following one uh, uh, are going to to be used for uh, detecting the attack and. Uh, getting uh, the details of the attack. So in this case, this one is a very simple one. We're going to check a few few bits to make sure they're correct. And uh, since we need some to keep some data, we're going to return a pointer to something, to our, our configuration. And as you can see, this is a um, frame analysis plugin. Uh, and the minimum supported version is currently, uh, this one is 0 0.1. And uh, only support that version. And this is what is going to be logged when the plugin is loaded. Uh, in this case, we don't care about uh, any type of frame, we're going to analyze every single frame. And uh, not only for our clients, but for everything else. So the, this function returns if uh, this frame uh, can be used. So as you can see, uh, we need the frame to be uh, different than a uh, data frame. This one says, uh, it, is it possible that it's an attack? Or is it possible that it is going to be an attack? And then that's where the, the thread that is going to uh, gather, gather all the packets for, uh, for, for this plugin is going to start recording uh, those data for, and keep it for the plugin. And this thing can uh, determine if we need a specific amount of frame before starting analyzing if it's an attack or not, or if it, if it needs some time before it, or, or if it's a frame rate based attack, if you can combine both. And then this one is going to return uh, if 
if it is an attack or not. Uh, we're go going to do some basic check. And the last one is give the details. Uh, in this case, this is an uh, anomaly on the network because uh, these bits need to be set only for data frames. So it's really not, not that hard to, to do a plugin. Uh, compiling it. Uh, so let's see the make file first. There we go. Uh, this one. So just uh, compiling and say it's for a shared object and give it the name of the shared object. That's the actual name. That's it. So compiling it. So we are done. We just got three plugins compiled, and the configuration is quite easy to do. Uh, those plugins don't have any parameters. So you specify here the plugin, the name of the plugin you want to reference, and uh, the path to it. And if you need any parameters, you can add just right to right next to that. So here we have those two plugins enabled. And that's it. Package reassembly, uh, data can come from several different sources. And uh, those, uh, the devices, the sensors, see different parts of the communication. Not always the same. Uh, so sometimes completely different. Sometimes parts are the same. Uh, so we need to reassemble that. And how it works is that we gather all the packets from different sources. We put it into a list. We discard all the duplicates. Uh, most of the time is very easy. Uh, and then uh, sometimes we need some reordering because of the yeah, arrival time of some packets. Uh, now the releases. Uh, the first uh, version is going to be released in a two weeks. Uh, how I see it is that uh, it needs to be tested. Uh, I'm looking for testers um, beside me. Uh, uh, and since we're going to have to rewrite, I want to do first a few version uh, of this thing. And from that experience, uh, we write it in C++. Since we're going to have, uh, we're going to see things changing. Uh, version 0.2 is when we will have uh, more modules, more features, and obviously bug fixes. 1.1, uh, you would see the graphical user interface. Uh, version 1.2, uh, you will be able to locate uh, attackers on the map uh, thanks to the GUI. Uh, usually you need more than one sensor to do that. You could do that with a single one, but it's not going to be very really accurate. Uh, the more sensor you have to cover a place, uh, the more accurate it's going to be. And 1.3 it would be available as a module for OpenWRT or P NPF Sense, if it hasn't been done before, etc. Uh, what you can expect in 0 0.1 is uh, having a sensor. Uh, and the server uh, supports a single sensor. 
supposed more than one connection, but uh, the behavior is not. Um, we're the behavior is uh, unexpected uh, because we don't do any reassembly. Uh, plugins available, frame, frame analysis and uh, logging. Uh, we're going to be able to detect uh, all the attacks of Eric and uh, a few a few other attacks available. And logging and probably alert plugin as well as documentation for uh, uh, getting it, uh, compiling, set, setting it up, and using it. And also documentation for uh, creating your own plugins. Uh, 0 0.2, you would see uh, encrypted communication between the sensor and server, as well as uh, China helping. The server will support uh, multiple sensors, more plugin types, uh, and more uh, existing plugin types and bug fixes, obviously. Uh, 0 0.3, uh, we'll see a read remote pickup. Uh, for those who don't know, uh, Wireshark support, supports remote pickup. So you can connect to a remote server uh, to do packet capture. Unfortunately, that tool only exists on Windows. Uh, you can find it in a Wireshark folder. It's a rpcap.exe. And basically, you connect to the address rpcab uh, semicolon slash slash uh, the address of the server. And uh, we're going to support the, the real one. So uh, hopefully, contribute to, to do a, one for uh, any kind of interface. Server, uh, you will see database. Uh, we need to, to see what is worth storing in the database. We need to design it. And there will be more plugins and uh, script wrapper plugin. There will probably be uh, 0 0.4 to fix bugs uh, in that version. 1.0 uh, will be based on uh, your inputs and the experience we had with it, uh, things that need to be changed, etc. For a development point of view, C++ is, is much easier and it's not slower than C. And there won't be any change on how plugin works. There might be a few more functions uh, and maybe more plugin types. And for a following version, to, uh, a detailed uh, planning will be available on the website. Um, you probably want to uh, see how this thing works. And um, I first wanted to do a video, but unfortunately, I uh, left all my video equipment at home. I didn't have time to do one, so let's see it in action. So here, the, I just started the server. It um, parsed uh, all this configuration uh, and then uh, started uh, loading the plugins. Uh, this is the one uh, I showed you earlier. And it doesn't have any parameters. We're, this is a debug mode, so we see a lot of information. Uh, loaded functions correctly and give some details about uh, uh, the settings of that plugin. And this is the, the line that is returned by the function. Uh, the following one is uh, uh, that you're going to, to see is uh, the, the, auth, the authentication attack. Uh, this plugin detects uh, the authentication. And uh, he has, uh, as you can see, it requires some specific frames. So uh, only frames uh, type zero, which are uh, management frames. 
and uh, subtype 12, which is uh, the authentication frames. So, so as you can see, I successfully read this configuration. Uh, started the packet reassembly thread, there is nothing yet. And, uh, and uh, packet analysis, which is uh, where it's going to gather all the data for uh, the plugins and call the plugin. And it is waiting for sensors. So I'm going to start a sensor here, uh, specifying uh, uh, the monitor interface, the address to the server, login and passwords. And you can see the whole communication between uh, the sensor and server. It is that it's connected to the remote pickup, accurately feeding a server with uh, all the all the frames. Now I'm going to do uh, the authentication uh, first. Uh, broadcast the authentication. I mean, uh, no, I'm not targeting any access point here. It's just a fit an existing Mac, so, but you will see, see uh, the detection here. <laughs> so, uh, as you can see, it just uh, detected the, the authentication. It's a uh, broadcast the authentication. Uh, since this thing uh, should never happen on networks, you should never see broadcast the authentication. Uh, as soon as we see one, uh, we're going to detect it and warn. Uh, you might wonder why there are so, so many uh, alerts. Uh, I'm going to throttle that and show only one. But when you start a replay in that mode, uh, it is not set, when you say to send a w one, in reality it sends uh, more than just one. So as you can see, it sends not one, but a bunch of them. Like 256, so <laughs> quite a lot. And we're able to detect every play since it has a specific signature. Uh, and then, it's able also to detect the regular uh, the authentication. Uh, the ac your access point uh, sending uh, the authentication will not uh, trigger uh, that thing, since it, it needs a specific amount of uh, frames uh, before triggering. Yeah, the every place sends uh, the authentication packets in both directions, both the to the client and saying uh, I'm the access point, and to the access point saying I'm the client, I'm the authenticator. So there we go. So uh, the first version is going to be released in about two, three weeks. Uh, the code's in some polishing and more testing. Uh, tester will be conducting in about a week. Uh, there will be a week for testing. And we're going to have to write the documentation. And there will be a bug tracker and a subversion repository available. Uh, the website is already up with some basic information. And uh, IOC channel is available on Freenode. It's an open web slash ng. Uh, we need some, we need coders and uh, testers. So contact me if you're interested, or even if you have ideas, remark, or any suggestion of things that can be added to this software. That's all. Thanks, everybody. Do you have any question? Yeah.
that's, I mean, just the idea of all the sensors sending the traffic that's in the fly server is an insight for the scale. I mean, uh, you have five sensors or ten sensors. D depending on, on, on the business of your network, uh, there will be a few options available on the sensor. Uh, if we be able to do, you will be able to do some processing on, on the sensor if you if you don't want to send all the traffic through your network. Uh, I'm going to find how I can make it uh, make the sensor do the processing and make the plugins uh, do all the processing uh, on the sensor and be compatible with sensor. Uh, another option you can do is uh, discarding all the payload from the data frames. So that would be the most common frames you can see on the wireless network. Uh, you can you would be able to tell the sensor to uh, not send uh, the content of the data frames. Yes. Uh, what chipsets uh, are you going to support? Uh, you might be looking at wireless branch or anything specifically for home coverage, like uh, the authentication or for just the sensor portion that's not hard to be supporting. Because you do get points on the uh, the question is, uh, what are the chip chips that support it? Uh, all the wireless card supports uh, monitor modes and are capable of injection can be used with uh, this software. Okay, yep. Great. And even on Windows, you we will support the uh, RPCAP device. So if you want to run a sensor on Windows, that will be doable. Any other? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, our PCAP protocol I've seen only supported the Windows version of our server. Do you know if you're playing out the Linux system? Um, it's about the remote PCAP protocol. Uh, the protocol. I think you, you can uh, do a remote PCAP, connect to remote PCAP from, uh, a lin from Linux. But you can only start it, uh, create it on a, on, a, on a Windows machine. There's, the tool is only available on Windows. And what I'm going to do is make a, a tool available on Linux too. So we can support wireless and even any kind of interface. Yeah. How are you talking about the Internally, okay, you got one bad user in the gear packet, you don't remember. So, how, what's the, how are you, you know, back together? Back together. Is it, is it about uh, legitimate user that they're attacked? So, uh, basically, a bad user, yes, attacking. So, uh, when we're going to detect an attack, uh, if we can uh, de authenticate the user, uh, and we're going to prevent him from joining the network. So we don't want that user to be part of the attack. Or if he, if he's not the origin of the attack, we don't want him to to help the attackers joining the net, network. So we're going to to ban both uh, from the network. But that would be configurable, and you will have to solve the issue and tell the whips I'm allowing that user again. Any other question? Are you going to provide a mechanism so that on this layer 2, uh, IPS rules are passed, but I can try to pass the layer 3 and I'll go back to the same storm or another type of IPS or IPS? Uh, yeah, I, I was thinking about that. Uh, the frame analysis plugin, there will be several layers. Uh, First, uh, there will be the, the basic one we can work with the uh, uh, frame that comes directly from the air. Uh, there will be another layer which is, uh, will be decrypting the traffic in case it's uh, web or WPA. And that's where the GPU is going to be handy when you have a busy network. And then you can add another layer in case you have a VPN to uh, decrypt the traffic. And at the end, uh, you will see the traffic unencrypted, and you will be able to send it to something else. And if, any other question? Thank you very much.